All right, Dallas Attorney Clint David is here to talk a bit about this. Um, apparently, the Supreme Court is going to decide this of, of Indiana. But can a, can a base, in your opinion, can a mm -hmm. baseball team be held responsible? For this, for a foul ball that comes into the stands. <laughs> well, you know, somebody. Steve. First of all, isn't this another reason for the world to love lawyers bringing <laughs> cases like this? But um, they can be. I mean, it 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 really depends. This is a very unique situation because, first of all, the court of appeals held. Look, she doesn't have a case. She right. goes to the baseball park all the time. She knows people get hit by foul balls, warning signs everywhere, warning sign on the back of her ticket. She could have sat in protective seating. She doesn't have a case. So it goes to the Supreme Court. Why is the Supreme Court hearing this? They're hearing it because her attorney made an argument that there is netting near her seats and there was a gap in the netting where they shoot T-shirts and promotional materials through. Mm -hmm. And she is saying in her sworn deposition, the ball that hit her, and this was a serious injury as we saw, oh, yeah, went serious. right through the gap and hit her in the head. And they are saying that they should be able to have their day in court to consider whether or not that netting was negligent. Okay, so that, that that's funny. I'm glad you brought that up because the story didn't really make that clear. No, they, they said didn't. That they wanted them to extend the netting, but you're saying that the filing is there was a gap there. A gap in the netting where she was sitting. So um, that would open. The, it's, uh, that's that's an interesting question. Like sort of, uh, I guess if if the net was not repaired and there was a right. hole in I mean, it. Let's say you're behind home plate yep. and there's a hole in the net. That would be dangerous. Get, I mean, that is clear negligence because they know it's a dangerous area. There's a there's a hole there. They didn't repair it. So it's really a little more um, detail oriented than the, than the story led it to believe. But generally speaking, Steve, this is important. Um, the laws around the country favor sports teams in situations like this. Mm -hmm. You know, whether it's getting hit by a hockey puck a baseball bat, broken bat, ball, NASCAR, if you're up in the stands. I mean, my goodness, there's flying car parts. I mean, there can be deaths from that. The courts universally rule that you assume the risk. It's called assumption of the risk. You go into these ballparks, you go into these venues, you assume the risk of injury. Because if the law didn't hold that, I mean, it would probably end live sporting events as we know them. The exposure would be off the chart. They couldn't afford insurance. And so, or there'd be so many fences and walls up, you couldn't see the game anyway. Yeah, the, the Rangers had to change their fencing. They did have to change their fencing. But that was them, right? That was that their was decision. Them. If you meet it wasn't the a court that ordered that. That's right. If you meet the required standards for safety mm -hmm. that are accepted around the league, and that's what the Rangers said at that time about the height of those fences, mm -hmm. just because they choose to raise them and make them safer doesn't mean that they weren't <laughs> minimally necessary and required for what was there at the time of the injury. Let's talk about, and, and they want to, I know they're calling on video and we're supposed to go to specific video. We, you talked about the back of the ticket with a warning. If you want to show yeah. that video, show it now. Um, let's talk about the, all the things that happened, though. The, the puck went into stands and killed a little girl. That, that made for voluntary changes. What will it take, if necessary, for voluntary changes at ballparks? You well, know what I mean? This, this I, woman, I, I can see both sides of it. If, if sure. I'm a family member of this woman... She was it's horrible. Injured. I mean, there's no oh. doubt. Here's the, just, we just can't have. I mean, he, here's the balance: safety of the fans versus the enjoyment of the event. I mean, you are told be careful, be aware, be observant. Um, so that's got to be the, the the balance that the fans. Is that enough? I mean, it, it is. You, you have that warning. Is it, well, that enough? It, I mean, the warning on a ticket, for example, is kind of interesting. I mean, that is a license for you to enter, and you do have to live by those rules. Um, but Warnings aren't always good. You can't put a warning on the side of an airplane in neon lights that say, this plane can crash, enter at your own risk. It doesn't work that way if there's negligence. So you think this is going nowhere, though, ultimately? I think what could happen is the Supreme Court will probably remand it or they wouldn't take the case, and it'll go to trial, and they'll decide whether or not that particular instance was negligence. But this won't change the rules of baseball, of assumption of the risk. Courts around the country routinely say, if you go to the ballpark, except where it's high danger areas behind the plate, you're going to assume the risk of getting hurt. Be careful. Keep your eyes open. Keep your out. eyes open. You got it. Be ready. Clint David, thanks. You bet, man.